Tomas, it is good to see you this morning. It is good to be here. It's good to see you as well. Glad you made it in. It's yeah. raining, folks. On it is. January 10th, it is. it feels like kind of spring. 32 degrees above average temperature. Excellent. <laughs> Which is insane. Flash Conspiracy flooding. Theory. Watch out. Uh, well, thank you for joining us out there. This is Friday on the Fly. If you accidentally clicked that button, stay here anyway. And just uh, listen to the shenanigans that could happen. Uh, we'll try to bring you some beneficial content as well as maybe some entertainment. Yeah. It's probably going to be uh, it's probably going to be 2080 on that ratio. Uh, maybe 15. What's what's 85? 85. I can't do math this <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> Set myself up there, Tomas. I was actually thinking about some <laughs> algebra on my way here. You know how you move. Of course, thing. you would. Be. X equals something. So right. It was. Uh, yeah. The quadratic pretty, formula. Pretty That's not algebra, is it? I'm sure it's something like that. I don't even remember. The Pre-cal. Thing. I remember there's It'd a... Be pre-cal. Anyway, yeah. There's a square root Trig. in there somewhere. Uh, so, <laughs> now that you're bored to death, folks, let's get into something interesting. Uh, we have... I'm going to start off the day just giving you the titles to um, Successful Farming. They have a top three... Uh, what do they even title it? Three big things today. So, this is for January 10th, 2020, folks. I'm not going to go through each specific one. I just want to give you a lay of the land. Uh, you can check those out later if you would like to. Number one, soybeans, grains, little changed on trade ahead of reports. Number two, we've got WASD, W A S D E, production. Did I just say that totally wrong? I, I'm ignorant, uh-huh. Tomas. Estimates expected to be down monthly. Grain stocks also seen lower. Never claim to be an expert, folks. All right. Uh, winter storm warnings. This is number three in effect from Kansas to Michigan. And like, uh, yeah, we're experiencing that. So um, Northwest uh, maps show. All right. There you yeah, go. and that's uh, that's pretty <coughs> relevant for us too because we're getting a lot of rain right now. Yeah, but that that last one when that cold front comes in, it looks like it's gonna about halfway through Illinois, most of Wisconsin, Michigan. There's gonna be a line there where you get some ice, and then um, one of our counterparts, a uh, guy I'm working on scheduling some training with, is supposed to come over Monday, and he said he's uh, forecasted to get like 12 inches of snow. Excellent. So. That's rock steady. That's what you want. Hard to believe when it's going to be 60 (laughs) degrees here today and tomorrow. (laughs) And that's kind of been the case, right? This this last year was, you know, things were happening in Iowa or in Nebraska, and then here it's totally different. And Mm -hmm. uh, I I know we're not in the, you know, we're not close necessarily, but still it's kind of regionally. Yeah. Now you think the weather pattern, when it's there, it's eventually going to get here. Right. It's been been a weird weather. You know what we should do? We should talk about something with coffee today. Coffee? I didn't get coffee. So I went through. Here's, well, then there's. Here's how, I have coffee. You don't. That's perfect. Here's how prepared Tyler Wilson is today. So as I'm driving down here late as usual, yeah. um, which we don't really have a time frame, so it's not really not late, but I'm great. later than I want to be. Yep. And I said, you know what? I, I need to stop and I'm hungry. I'll get some coffee and give me a breakfast sandwich at the old McDonald's. And I, I pull okay, up there yeah. to I order. I thought you were going to say gas station. I was like, that's no, not no, a no, good no, idea. No, no. Awesome. Been there, done that. Yeah. And uh, I go there and. As habit, when you first pull up to the window, before you start talking, you kind of reach in and pull your wallet out and get ready to start getting your your, your payment ready. Yeah. And I reach in the old pocket and whoop, no wallet. What was not there? Oh, that's the worst. See, Tomas, I made so, three trips back into the house this morning before I actually sat down in my car. Really? And one was to go back and get my wallet. It's yep. it's not a good feeling. So I didn't even say good morning to the little lady on the thing. Yeah. And I just drove nope, off. Just so I am here with no coffee, which is dangerous on a Friday, anyways. But um, well, let's talk about it. I'm going to look up coffee news, Tomas. Uh, tell us the first coffee about news. the dairy. Uh, yeah, we wanted to bring you a, a story from AgWeb. Uh, it's one of the main stories on the page this morning. But uh, w- the title is Wisconsin loses eighteen or eighteen, eight hundred and eighteen dairies in 2019, largest decline in state's history, and. You know, we hear about the decline in number of farms all the time, right? Farming is... Um, or just the combination of farms. Right, under decline one. in the number of farms. And it, it, it leads people to think, well, farming is declining. There's less, um, you know, it's it's less important maybe because there's less people doing it, which is actually not true because the bigger farmers are getting bigger. Yeah. So um, this... It's a really short article, but it actually states that 
even though the farms decreased by 44%, milk production increased by 20%. So we're becoming more efficient. The, the you know, the larger farmers are, are getting larger and more consolidation, um, which doesn't make it any less important. It just changes the landscape of, of what it looks like. So gotcha. I thought that was interesting. 818 is a pretty large number, really. Um, when you start looking at, you know, there's between 8,000 and over the last 15 years, almost 20 years, there's been between 8,000 and 16,000 dairy herds in Wisconsin. So they're, it's declining fairly rapidly, I would say. Yeah, it is. It's been cut in half over the last decade and a half. So, What all reasons did they give again? Uh, I'm looking for a coffee article, so my apologies for not paying no, full attention No, you're fine. Here. Um, not really reasons other than, um, the larger farms are becoming more efficient and able to handle more, um, more cows. So, uh, the average herd size in Wisconsin is about 170 cows today. And in 2009, it was roughly a hundred. So. <laughs> That's what we got to say about that. Yeah, well, I'm reading too. Um, Wisconsin. <laughs> no, it's just funny how you ended that <laughs> so just with your face. People can't see <laughs> who face. are listening. Like you're just that's good. You're kind of just like so. Yeah. It's uh, another fun fact about um, this spring. We talk about weather. Yeah. When you shave your beard off and you go outside and it's 60, it's not too bad. You go outside and it's like 10. It is cold. It makes a difference. It's yes, chilly. It does. Same with a haircut. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Yep. We got it all done. I can grow um, right out anytime. You're not going to find a coffee article. so. No, I've got, there's plenty to talk about. Uh, uh, I was it? just looking one that for one that's like specifically with farming. But, you know, uh, I think enough farmers drink farming. enough coffee yeah. to realize, you know, yeah. hey, this is important. You are impacted and, uh, by coffee. Where was it? Darn it. I had something. It was about a, uh, a coffee academy. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Hold on. Now, coffee it comes in many forms and shapes, sizes, aromas. I keep, I keep, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're looking over here. Uh, swipe, swipe, swipe. There we go. Okay. Uh, the Rikers Coffee Academy. This is from, this is a dated article considering how fast news travels these days, but it's from December 27th, so 13 days old, but I think it would probably be interesting anyway. Can teaching prison inmates to make lattes give them a chance at a better future? <laughs> interesting. Now, see, this is something... That's a skill. That's a learned skill well, that's transferable actually, to I was employment. Gonna, I was going to actually say that I was listening to uh, the Done Cast, which you should all listen to, D-O-A-N-E, Cast, uh, interesting stuff there. Um, and one of the most recent ones, I think it was episode 23, he had on a guy who's in, uh, he works for Atlantic Packaging. And um, one of his first jobs was for Starbucks back when Starbucks very first started. And it was interesting because he said when he was there just the year that he was, it actually took a lot of skill to work at Starbucks. And that was what was preventing them from being as large as they are today because everything they used was mechanical. So nothing was automated. It was all, you had to do everything. Espresso machine and everything had to be done with the, the skills learned how to do it. And it mattered because you had from order to um, serve, it had to be a minute process. So you had to be skilled not only in, in using the machines um, manually, but you also had to be fast and timely and get a, a good cup of coffee out. So I thought that was interesting that... Um, in tying that back into this, then it, it actually could, depending on where they would go with it in terms of like, this isn't going to make them better people. I'm not arguing that, but I would say that it could give them better opportunity to maybe find a job at like a local brew or something like that. You know what I mean? It if they learn be. the process. But if you think about it too, we are constantly using automation and, uh, and robotics and different things to eliminate skill in jobs but at the same time creating new jobs that require skill. And True. So, also so are they teaching prison inmates to fix latte machines? I haven't even read machines? the article. I don't even know. Or I think just make a latte. Uh, my, my, point, my point is, yeah, go for it. Uh, yesterday, and it, it's, it translates you know, right into what you're talking about. It relates very well. I went and got some keys made 
When was the last time you got a key made, like duplicated a key? Never. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> how long you have no... <laughs> never mind. Um, anyways, you, you traditionally you would go and get a key made, and it was like a manual process, right? You had yeah. to actually find the right key that matched and kind of hold them up, and then you put it in there and grind it down, and right. it, it was more of a, a, a skill. Well, yeah. the guy that helped me yesterday, great guy, but this big old fancy machine. Oh yeah. I put he put my key in there. It took a it, scan of it. And probably. it was red and he had to put it right in yeah. there where it was green. And then it scanned the key. And it told him at the top which key, which blank key to use. And it's not even that it just told him which one and now you gotta flip through the little right. the turnaround thing to find it. It actually lit up which one to like it's dummy proof. Yeah, you you, can't, ha- you just you, have to own the machine. If you put the wrong words, key yeah. in there, in the wrong blank in there, it says, oh, does not match. I like it. Use yeah. use different key. <laughs> it's like, you've got 14,000 blank keys here. I just need eight. Yeah. Well, we only have six of these, so we'll probably get more next week. I, said, I need eight keys. That's interesting because... They can only make me six keys. But <laughs> they, he, he put the blank in, and it was green. Yeah. Push a button. And, did, and just, and it just ma- made yeah, the keys. Yeah. Well, That's the same silly. thing goes for, um, I, I do a little bit of leather work, and recently, a uh, huge upgrade, I got a leather press, and manual press, just like, you know, there's a shaft, and you just crank it down, it's like four ton or something like that, little little guy. But uh, in order to um, have the layout I want, I sent a copy of, you know, a file to um, their a leather stamp maker, and they have they have machines where they uh, they create dies, so mm-hmm. die cutouts or whatever. So the same thing. They aren't they aren't like sitting there by hand or having to have any necessarily skill with it, um, but they do have to know their machine. They do have to know technology. But sure. same thing. It's it's automated in mm-hmm. that sense of it's just buzzing out my you know my die. So yeah, this is making yeah. me think of all kinds of different scenarios. When I was in college, um, at working in extension. We went to the, I couldn't even tell you what it's called now, but it was the place where the Purdue and the College of Ag, and they actually, it's like a workshop. They made all of their displays for the state fair uh, in their building. So mm-hmm. if they were going to have an educational display that was, you know, made out of wood and it was as big as this table, uh, interactive 3D, whatever, um, they would make it there. And they talked about, um, you know, 20 years ago, they would draw out designs. There was measuring involved. There was, you know, some some algebra, trig, whatever. Uh, probably more geometry, I guess. I, I hated geometry. Um, to figure out the design. And then they actually had to hand cut all of these pieces to make sure they fit together. Well, now you go and you have to understand how to use all the software on the computer. And you can create 3D models. And you can use a 3D right. printer and print it out. And then you push it to the machine and the machine cuts it all itself yep. like it's no longer a but i think a laborious process it's more of a uh, a technical engineering type person that's needed instead of the 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 craftsman craftsman which is another good point though and to swing it back to the coffee article um i'll quote something from it here in a minute but i think that that brings up a good point that there's actually two things going on one culturally speaking um and i've I know I probably tire people with talking about, I used to live in California, but it's just my experience for the last six years. So I'm drawing from it, um, out there and it's here as well in Indiana, but definitely out there, like in the LA area, there's a huge push. Um, and I I mean, across the country, but there's at the same time a push for all this technology, but also a push for getting back to doing things with skill, Mm -hmm. like what we've talked about getting away from with technology. So like there's, I mean, there's a huge market right now for handcrafted, <clears throat> handcrafted leather goods, handcrafted um, ironwork, um, like blacksmithing. There's um, for like unique parts for home decor, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, people want uh, that quote unquote authentic feel. Like, hey, I know that this guy who has worked for 20 years at blacksmithing made this gate that I'm putting, you know, mm-hmm. for my driveway or something, you know. So. Um, and he did it all by hand, you know, or whatever it is. Um, and the same thing goes with coffee, bringing it back to that, that um, Starbucks ironically started, like I said, as this place where it was mechanical. It actually took skill. There was a lot of kind of the almost hipster-ness 
to it if, mm-hmm. if you don't know what Absolutely. i mean by hipster kind of getting back to the authentic and all that type stuff people are trying to do mm-hmm. um but the irony in it is now it's the mainstream and so people are getting back to what starbucks started as and and they're doing kind of what starbucks started mm-hmm. doing and now they're kind of the the hand craftsman per se you know so it's it's pretty funny how it, it's all kind of circling back a little bit. So I think that that's probably what they're talking about in this article. Again, I haven't read the whole thing, but I will quote one um, paragraph from here. It says, the barista program, it's unpaid at Rikers. I don't even know where Rikers is. And a handful of others. Rik- like it, Rikers Island. It's uh, a, Rikers? It's a, what did I say earlier? What, where is this? No, Rikers. That's what you said. You don't know where it's at. It's no, a, I it's no a prison. We're talking about prison, I've, right? Thankfully, I don't know where it's at. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> prison in New York. You have a backstory there, Tomas. Um, anyway, I just watched Law and Order SVU. Oh no, that's yeah. And a handful of others, like it nationwide, gave inmates a new set of professional skills and a way to pass the time. But they also reflect a growing theory in criminal justice system that the eighty-eight billion dollar coffee industry, holy mackerel, can soften the blow of incarceration and provide a critical link to employment. A job, even one that pays 10 to $15 an hour, roughly the wage range at Starbucks, can help in the cycle of crime and... Res- what? I, I'm not even going to try it, folks. Experts say. Um, <laughs> words, you know. Who needs them? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, but anyway, I do think that that's, that's kind of interesting. And again, this all ties back to agriculture. Where are get, they getting the coffee beans? Um, you know, some farmer somewhere in the world, not necessarily the U.S., obviously, because you need the right conditions. But, uh, but yeah, somewhere, some farmer, some yeah. trees, coffee bean trees. Yeah, agriculture yeah. and farming is related in many different ways. Yep. So, the uh, the last thing we've got here for you, we'll wrap it up, but uh, we've referenced uh, a few times here national holidays and observances and all kinds of different fun things to talk about, but. Heard it on the radio this morning that today is actually the day that most people give up on their New Year's resolution. Just is out it the really door. 10 days? Mm-hmm. 10 days. That's, that's about how long it lasts. Yeah, that's why I don't start one. Yeah. Don't, no make, expectation. don't make promises you yeah. can't keep. <laughs> um, <but laughs> don't start something you can't finish. If you go to uh, <laughs> holidaysandobservances.com and you click on your day, you can see all the ridiculous things that um, we've created a fake holiday or observance for that people just gather together to talk about different things yes we had some pretty interesting ones previously and i'm not going to read all of them because there's like a thousand different things we can talk about you have a pretty good one there but there's two that somewhat (laughs) contradict each other and i i can't say that i don't need to probably indulge in both i don't need to indulge in one maybe but um but but they kind of counteract so this week january 5th through 11th 2020 uh is national lose weight and feel great week, which is positive. It kind of feeds into the New Year's resolution for a lot of people, right? Get healthy. Right. Um, so it makes sense that that week would be this week, and yay, Yahoo. Uh, but it is also National Pizza Week. So you have to uh, consider, you know, respecting that, you know, observance, that holiday. I it mean, is yeah. national. I mean, That's... we will have to indulge in some pizza today. Right, uh, right. Just, you know because it says that there now yeah. does it aid in losing weight i don't know I, maybe we can get some no, cauliflower the, crust the, or no it flat out doesn't some gluten-free <laughs> does gluten-free no, help you lose weight that's it just flat out doesn't <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's pizza or it's health it's kind of yeah i don't yeah. know i brought up gluten is that too. today you said today yeah this or week the whole week oh we actually i've actually missed out on Good most of the week so we gotta yeah, make we, up for it today missed out <laughs> all right well um hmm if you How watch, if you watch, this is a really side note. We probably don't even bring it up, but uh, Katie likes to watch the Great British Baking Show on uh, Netflix, and yeah. you know all the people are baking and everything. It's cool because they're you know they're British and they talk you know with an accent. But right. that, that's why I like was. I always go into an Australian but, accent. I can't do the, the British. They're, they're making bread and they're talking about you know kneading the bread and releasing the gluten, forming the gluten. You know, that's what we need. But then everybody else is, we don't need gluten. Gluten's bad. <laughs> and all these people on this show, it's like, we're creating this to kill you. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's funny listening to yes. <laughs> that, trying to put two <laughs> and two together. It's like, is gluten bad? Yeah. Is gluten good? So I, don't, yeah. I don't know. 
Anyway, Good doesn't stuff. matter. Eat some pizza. All right. If you've actually stayed to the end of this, we appreciate it. I'm not even going to belabor you with all the things you should do with this podcast. You know what to do. Just please do it. And uh, join us next time for Friday on the Fly 34, I believe. I think this was 33. Thanks for joining us. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you later. Peace.